let me read to you some actual newspaper headlines. Deer kill 17,000. I drops off shelf. Prostitutes appeal to Pope. These sentences point out something that's fundamental about language. It's ambiguous, it's complicated, it's language is messy. In this first segment, we're going to talk about what language is. Now, language is important because it enables us to communicate, it adds meaning to our lives, and enables us to develop cultures and to think. The average person has a vocabulary of about 65,000 words, which can be combined to form a near infinite number of possible sentences. Language is symbolic. It's a set of symbols that a group of people agree on as having a particular meaning. Language is fundamental to cognition, and it's very rule-based, and it's also hierarchical. Like I said, you can take words and put them together and make sentences. Now, what do I mean by symbolic? Well, you could take an apple. There's no reason that apple is the word that we use to refer to an apple. Could be anything, right? Could be a pum. Could be a manzana. It could be a sign. Any one of those is a perfectly good symbol for apple. What's key is a group of people have to agree that that is the symbol that we're going to use to refer to apple. Language is alive. It's always changing. Every year, dictionaries become larger. They need to add new words. So the words added two years ago in 2018 included selfie and self-checkout. Now, those concepts, those words didn't exist until a few years ago. But now, could you imagine a word, a world without the word selfie? Language is tricky. It's really ambiguous. And let's just take one sentence and talk about ambiguity. So here's the sentence. I made her duck. What does that mean? Could mean a lot of different things. It could mean that I took a duck, a waterfowl, and I cooked it for her. Right? It could mean I took her duck, her waterfowl, and I cooked it. It could be that I made a, a wooden carving or a plaster sculpture of a duck for her. I made her duck. It could mean that I caused her to duck her head, right? It could mean that I sort of waved a magic wand and I turned her into a duck, some undifferentiated duck. So that's one sentence, five possible interpretations. How do we communicate anything? Well, according to this guy, Charles Hockett, who was uh, an American linguist and anthropologist, there are certain rules that are universal. In fact, he called them universals. Human language has more universals than other kinds of language, but still. I'm gonna tell you about just a few of the universal rules uh, that apply to language. One of them is meaning. Words have meaning, but when your dog barks and your cat meows, those sounds have meaning too. Now, Animal noises, like a chicken saying cluck, cluck, cluck. Uh, chickens say cluck to a lot of different things, right? So a, a, an animal sound is even more ambiguous than a human word or sign, um, but they all carry meaning. Words are arbitrary, right? I mentioned this sim symbol. There's no reason that we call an apple an apple. We don't need to call an apple an apple. As long as we agree on something, we could call an apple a and as long as everybody agreed that meant apple, it's perfectly good. You might think that some concepts have to have certain words with them. And if there's any domain in the world where a concept has to have a particular word associated with it, you would think it would be animal sounds. Because the sound that a pig makes in LA is the same sound that a pig makes in Paris or a pig makes in Taipei, right? Doesn't matter. Pigs and chickens and dogs and cats make the same sound all over the world. Or do they? Many people think this video is the funnest point of the whole class. Enjoy. Woof, woof. Wong, 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 wong. Zap, zap. Woof, woof. Bow, bow. Woof, woof. Hum, hum. Hum, hum, hum. Oh, oh. Wow, wow. 
Bow wow. Gum gum. Gheu gheu. Gheu gheu. Woof woof. Wow wow. Wow wow. Wow wow. Woof 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 woof. Ho ho. Ho ho. Ho ho. Ho ho. Cock a doo doo doo. Kiki kiki. Oh oh oh. Kek 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 kek. Kokoriko. Kokoriko. Kukuda. Kukuda. Uh 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 uh. Koke koko. Kukariemo. Kukuliku. Kukuliku. Kluk kluk kluk. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Kokoroko! Kokoroko! Kikiriki! Kokoriko! Oi! Oi! Gong, 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 gong! Oink, oink, oink! Kriu, kriu! Boo, boo! Boo, boo! Oink, 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 oink. Snark, 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 snark. Wasn't that funny? So the words that we use to convey animal sounds differ, even though the animal sounds themselves are all the same. We kind of think we're making the animal sound, but obviously we're not. Um, this gets at the arbitrariness of words. And the last universal I want to tell you about is naming. We tend to name things that we see. Why? Well, naming allows us to understand something at a deeper level. So for example, narcissism, right? Somebody who's super vain and egocentric and self-involved uh, and doesn't care about what they do to other people. Once you know that word, narcissism, it helps you identify narcissism in other people, especially lately. Labels, words and labels also help us to understand concepts that we teach to our children, like be gentle, 